So I read another non-fiction book. Hi guys, this is Meenu. Welcome back to my channel, Story TN. Today I'm going to be talking about Atomic Habits by James Clear. I have not actually read many non-fiction books in my life, but this year I have actually read two. The first one was The Psychology of Money. I'm going to put the link in the description down below. I really learned many things from the book. And with the Atomic Habits, I wanted the same thing. But I'm not going to say that it has the same impact on me as the first book did because I thought there was a lot of unnecessary talk in the book and it was also very much confusing compared to the first one. But anyway, there are still certain things that I've learned from the book and I'm going to talk about that. I really do not want to make this video very long so I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible but I know it's going to be long anyway but still I'm going to try my best. So I'm just going to talk about the things that I've learned and how I'm actually trying to implement that with my own habits. So the first thing that James Clear actually talks about in his book is how tiny changes actually makes a great difference. So if you try to be better at something, just one person every day. So by the end of the year, you're going to be just 37 times much better. So I think that does kind of make sense. Because if I do something, even the small changes, like I do not have to make any drastic changes in my life, like overnight. All I have to do is make very tiny changes. Like if I want to, you know, do the exercise, which I'm actually trying to do these days, I do not have to actually start with one whole hour of exercise the day that I start. I can start with two minutes in the first day, then five minutes the second day, then 10, then 15, then 16 and so on. So I can do that. I have to make it, you know, small changes every day. The key here is to be consistent and not to just doing it for long. Both psychology of money and atomic habits talk about compounding. In the first book, of course, it was about compounding of money and interest. And in this book, it is about compounding of habit. Like I've mentioned, if you do one habit one day and if you just keep on compounding it, you know, keep on increasing it every day, by the end of the year, you're going to achieve a great thing. So that is something that I have actually learned from this book, which does kind of make sense to me. The next thing that this book talk about is focusing on your system rather than your goals. Like uh, James Clear has mentioned here, every loser and every winner actually has the same goal, but not both of them actually achieve it. Who achieves it? Who is consistent? Someone who actually really works very hard towards it. That is the person who eventually achieves his slash her goals. You have to build a system if you want to achieve something. Like right now, my goal is to lose a lot of weight. I want to, you know, lose around 10 kgs. But if I keep on focusing on just losing 10 kg, I might not be able to do it. All I have to do is build a system, which I've actually built now. What I have done is I already wake up very early in the morning. I am an early riser, to be honest. So I wake up around 6, 6.30 and what I've been doing lately is exercising for 30 minutes or more. That has been something that I've been consistent for last 15 to 20 days. I have been following some challenges. I really follow Chloe Ting, so I really follow her workouts. So I've been doing her challenges and I've been very consistent with that. And also I've been very conscious about the calories that I take. I have avoided a lot of junk food and I'm really eating homemade food and I'm also following a very healthy diet too. So that is something that I have made a system right now and I have seen a few changes. I'm not going to lie. It's not a drastic change, but there are for certain changes that I have been seeing. Why am I seeing just small changes? Because I'm trying to build a system here. If I do it consistently for six to seven months at least, then only I'm going to be able to achieve my goal. If my goal is just to lose 10 gauge cages, I might, you know, do it in 15 days by, you know, eating very less food or, you know, exercising rigorously. But that will not actually help me achieve the goal in a long term. I have to keep on, you know, building a system which makes it very easy for me to actually achieve my goal, which is to lose weight and actually maintain that weight. I might lose 10 kgs now, but then again, if I do not build a system or I do not build a habit, I'm just going to gain more weight in the future, which have actually been happening to me for a very long time now. So I have to build a system so that I can keep on continuing it. I can keep on maintaining my weight. James Clear also talks about how you want to identify yourself. If you identify yourself as a healthy person, then you're going to do the things that a healthy person do. A healthy person does not eat junk food, at least not, you know, three times a day or, you know, every other day. Every person eats junk food. I'm not going to lie, but it has to be, you know, very consciously done. Like maybe once a week or maybe, you know, uh, once a month or twice a month or something but they do not actually you know do it every day or every other day 
so how do i want to identify myself do i want to identify myself as a healthy person so if i want to identify myself as a healthy person i have to do the things that a healthy person does i have to do at least you know uh, some sort of exercise i have to move my body i have to walk i have to eat healthy i have to be very conscious about the things that i put in my body i have to be very much conscious about my health so, so that is what a healthy person does there's another thing that i want to achieve i want to identify myself as a writer so i have to you know keep in mind what a writer actually does they have to be very consistent they write every day at least for few hours or at least they write something they sit down with their laptop or their notebook or anything and they try to write something which i have not been doing for a very long time i have been you know focusing on other things so that is something that i want to build my habit as i want to identify as a writer so of course if i want to be identified as that i have to do things that a writer does i have to write that is the main goal of a writer that i have to at least write so i'm not doing that consistently and i'm really planning to do that very soon in this book the author has divided our habits into four things it is the cue the craving the response and the reward the cue means that what are the things that is actually making you do a habit what are the cues like what is prompting your habits for example my cue of working out in the morning is my yoga mat if i put my yoga mat on the floor i'm going to work out that is the fact if i'm going to put my workout shoes i'm going to work out so those are my cues and to be honest the other three parts i did not understand that much the craving the response and uh, the reward part maybe the reward part i understand a little bit that you know i have to reward myself in a certain way but that just does not implement that much in my life like what am i rewarding the exercise is a reward itself so i do not know the only reward that i can think of that i might you know feel a little bit healthier or i might you know my clothes fit very nicely so other than that i do not see any other reward and i did not understand the other two things i'm not gonna lie i did not understand it uh, even a little bit i have tried you know reading it uh, again and again but i did not understand it so i'm not just going to explain it i just understand the cue part that is all the next thing he tells us to do is be specific and that is something that i'm totally behind i think that was such a great hack and i really loved it i'm not re- of course going to be implementing that and i have been implementing that anyway that if i want to exercise like i said if i want to exercise so i have to be very specific when i want to sp- exercise i just cannot say that oh yeah i'm going to be exercising but i have to keep in mind when i'm going to be exercising i have to even write it down or just you know have it in my mind or i have to talk it out loud that i'm going to be exercising today at 6 pm or i'm going to be exercising tomorrow at 8 am i have to be very specific what i want to do like with my writing i have to be very specific that i want to start writing by 8 o'clock in the morning and be finished by 10 am in the morning and i or i have to at least write 2000 words a day I have to be very specific with the kind of thing that I want to do the kind of habit that I want to start so that is something that I'm surely going to be implementing I think that was a very nice hack other thing is environment is necessary that is not that big of a deal for me not every day you get an environment which you know motivates into everything like for me I do not have an exercise or you know very healthy kind of environment my mom is pretty much healthy like she is someone who you know tries to be very healthy the so that is what i love but other than that i do not have anybody else who is actually trying to be healthy other than me and the writing part is like i am totally pariah in this thing because none of the people that i know actually write or read or anything so i'm not never going to get that environment at least not now i do not know anybody i do not think i'm going to have that circle any time soon but uh, i don't know that environment thing did not actually work for me the next thing he talks about is stacking of habit so that is something that okay makes sense you have to stack a habit like uh, my habit is to get up early in the morning that is a habit that many, not many people have but i do already have that habit i do wake up early in the morning so that is one habit that i'm sticking to so my next habit i have to you know stack so with me waking up early in the morning i can exercise early in the morning so that is i have actually stacked one habit to the other if i wake up early in the morning i can actually drink a lot of water empty stomach so that is again something pre workout i can have a healthy snack so that is also again a, a habit which i can st- stack upon one on to another so that so that is something i actually agree with too the next thing that the author talks about is a 2 minute rule that if you have trouble doing something you know for a long time you all you can always start with the small thing like f- with the 2 minute thing if you do not like exercising at all just do 2 3 minutes of squats or something 
just start just do it for one or two minutes and eventually you're gonna learn the habit of doing it for a long time if i want to write all i have to do is start all i have to keep in my mind is just to do it for two minutes and i'm pretty sure i'm gonna do it for longer minutes uh, last year i was doing this 30 minutes writing thing where i have to write at least 30 minutes every day so i used to think that i'm just gonna do it for 30 minutes but I ended up doing it for one hour or one and a half hours or even two hours. That is because once I start writing, I just keep on writing. But before actually writing, I start to think that no, this is going to take a lot of my time. It is going to take two or three hours of a time and I already have a full time job. So I cannot actually do that. And I'm already stressed out with other works. So I'm not going to just do it. I'm not going to start doing it. So that is also something to keep in mind that two minute rule all you have to do is do it for two minutes and you're eventually gonna do it for as long as you can the other thing that uh, author thinks is necessary is to track your habits i'm gonna give myself as the example so why not of course i've been working out every day for last 15 to 20 days so of course i've been tracking my weight uh, with the weighing machine it has sometimes backfired on me because there were days where i did not actually see any difference not even for grams i did not see any difference my weight was consistent for five to ten days so that was kind of heartbreaking because i was putting so much effort into it and i was not actually getting result so that was kind of heartbreaking and that actually kind of you know made me not feel any more energetic for the workout but now i have seen changes i have been tracking it i do have a weighing machine so i have been tracking it so i know how much progress that i've made i can also see myself in a mirror a little bit so of course i've seen a little bit of changes it's not a very drastic change i'm not gonna say that i've lost five to ten kgs i'm not gonna say that it is maybe one or two kgs that i've lost but still i've seen the changes so that is motivation enough for me to actually keep on going even with the youtube i have seen that they have not been you know that drastic change in subscribers but i have seen the views actually grow i have been keeping a track of it so i've seen the views grow so that is so if i keep on tracking the things that i'm doing i might be you know able to continue doing it tracking my writing habits that oh i have actually finished 500 words today and the next day i have actually done 700 and after then 1000 after then 2000 so if i actually see my progress physically at least then i might be continuing my habit i'm going to be very consistent with my habit of what i'm actually doing so I think that is a very nice point. The next important aspect that the author talks about is having an accountability partner. So if you have an accountability partner, he or she is going to make sure that you stick to your habit. You are continuing on the path that you have chosen. My accountability partner is my boyfriend. So he has been someone who has been, you know, there for me. Sometimes when I have trouble waking up in the morning, tell him daily to wake me up at this certain time and he does that. But he wakes up early too and he makes sure that I wake up too. So in that case, he's my accountability partner. He also motivates me to, you know, have a healthy diet. He also motivates me to maintain a habit of writing. He is my, you know, the greatest support of writing. Like he supports me a lot when it comes to writing. There are days or there are months that I actually do not write. But he motivates me to actually do it. He tells me, oh, you have to do it because something that is something that you write. I, there are many times that I feel that why am I even doing it? Because there is a great chance that I'm not going to publish it ever. What he tells me is, Karm karte jao, fal ki mat karo. Just keep on doing what you're doing. Just do not think about the result or just do not think about the future. Just keep on doing it. Even though he's very good at giving me pep talks, he's really bad at it himself. He does not follow whatever he preaches to me. He does not stick with his habits. He never has been able to continue his habits. He has never been able to, you know, stick to one certain habit. So he's really bad at it. But he makes sure that I stick with it. I know that I should be his accountability partner and I try, but I get very angry when he does not do things that I tell him to. So it does not actually work. I'm not as patient as he is. I get very angry when he does not follow healthy habits and everything. That is why I just leave him be because I, we just gonna have a lot of fight if I keep on you know telling him because I'm not as patient I do not have that much of patience with me I'm just gonna get angry so I just cannot be his accountability partner I'm really very bad at it the next thing that the author talks about and this is something that is gonna stick with me forever he talks about that if you want to make something your habit you have to make it visible for example I have really trouble drinking water that is something that I have a lot of problem with so when I go to office I generally keep a water bottle or a 
a jar kind of a thing with some shea seed in it with water in it so i whenever i see it i always drink it as it is visible to me at all time while i'm working as it is visible for me i drink a lot of water and now that i've started working for home for few days now i've again started neglecting water so that is something has always been a problem for me because i don't see it i do not do it i do not have a water bottle in front of my eyes that is i'm not drinking water it does not come to my mind the common phrase that i can use is out of sight out of mind okay so if there is something that i want to do and it is not in front of me there's a great chance that i'm not going to do it if the workout clothes or the, the yoga mat or the shoes is not in front of my eyes i'm not going to do it he has also explained that about bad habits if i do not see junk food in front of my eyes i'm not going to eat it for example whenever i go to office of course there are a lot of temptation when you are on road when you are going out there are a lot of junk food and everything and i always break out and i always eat something or the other thing i always used to bring something unhealthy to my house and eat it and also share the same with my family but now that i'm again working from home for few days i there are really any junk food in my house maybe there are one or two cookies in my house but other than that there's nothing so of course i'm not eating it as it is out of my sight i'm not actually eating it i'm not binging on it so that is something james has actually talked about that if you want to start a good habit you have to make it visible and if you want to discontinue a bad habit you have to make it invisible that is the goal here make it visible if it's a good habit make it visible if it's a bad habit make it invisible the last lesson that i have learned from this book is something that i have learned before too i do not know if you follow matt devela's channel or not i really love his videos i really love his productivity videos so in his video he has talked about two day rule i'm going to link the video in the description down below you can check it out in this two day rule uh, he, what he says is not to miss a habit two days in a row for example if i'm building a habit of writing i cannot stop writing for two days in a row for example if i am sick or if i'm burned out or if there's something that happens to me i mean of course there is exceptional case like if you have corona you're going to be you know out of it uh, for 14 days or if you have any certain personal issues or other issues those are the exceptions those are certain exceptions uh, those are acceptable but like if i'm just you know burn out or exhausted or if i i'm just lazy for example all i can do is skip for a day i can take a rest for a single day but the next day i have to do it if i want to make it as a good habit if i want to make it as a habit i have to do it the other day the next day i have to keep on doing same goes with exercising same goes with other habits i can relate with these two habits right now only but i have to do it the second day i cannot skip it two days in a row and the same thing james clear has talked about in this book that to never break the chain take a personal day take one day off but continue it the next day that is the point that i am going to stick with because i really like that there are also other things that james clear has talked about and most of them i did not understand or did not actually care about i think this book was a little too long for me i really love the examples that james clear has used actually really love the use of examples in all the non fiction books i think that makes it more interesting the live examples are always good to listen to and of course uh, non fiction books are very much better if you listen to audio book but i think any non fiction actually works great with audio books you think uh, you should uh, listen to it rather than read it at least it has been in my case i have actually enjoyed listen to the audio books if i'm going to have to give stars to atomic habits i'm going to give it three and half stars like i said there are many things that was unnecessary in this book it is for me maybe not for uh, people in journal but for me i found it a little bit i found it a little bit too lengthy there are certain parts that could have, that could have been skipped there were certain places that it was actually leaving the point or maybe there were a little bit too repetitive with, with certain things but other than that i think this book can be really useful everyone should at least read it once if you want me to read more non fiction books or if you have any recommendation for me do let me know in the comments down below i will of course see you next time do not forget to subscribe till we meet again bye